Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the narrative lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. This is the first Sunday of the year. Welcome 2023. It's the first day of the year. And so um, in week six of the Christian year, we can now say to the rest of the world, Happy New Year. The um, Testament, uh, New Testament is ordered with an uh, opening that um, seems like the beta version of Ancestry.com. Um, <laughs> Matthew opens with this genealogy that affirms the message of Israel's God as being in control, as loyal in covenant to love, as steadfast. And we might think that genealogies are dull, though a lot of folks are spending money to get um, one of these uh, ancestry DNA tests and find out who we are. Uh, the ancient audience would have found this uh, pretty exciting as an overview. Um, and particularly the writer of this gospel is connecting Jesus' teaching and mission to Israel's ancient covenant that he begins um, with the covenant's beginning, which is with Abraham. And uh, so um, I just love, I have come to love uh, this scenario where uh, if you think your family's messed up, take a look to at the uh, lesser known names in this list of Jesus' family. And by that, I don't mean the unknown names because there are a lot of them, but I mean the lesser known names, which expose the scandal of the grace of God. Matthew is attentive to the epochs of ancient Israel's history. Um, so some folks will catch that double sevens where you have 14 generations, uh, which closely align to three major cycles of the promise of Abraham and Sarah that uh, to be a blessing to all the world. Um, it's confirmed with Tamar, whose rights were hijacked by her father-in-law and it's renewed with David, uh, uh, whose genuine seeking after God's um, was met by merciful grace, despite his despicable abuse of power and abysmal parenting. So in terms of God keeping God's uh, promise, these cycles uh, show us that God is still working. And in some ways we talked about the reality of living um, uh, under an uh, uh, empire that is unjust. And uh, here we have God showing up and showing up in the family of Jesus in some of the least expected persons, but tell us that God is faithful to, to keep God's promise to all the world. Yeah, thanks, Joy. Uh, that's a that's a great introduction. I think uh, I, I would highlight too. Uh, I like what did you say? Abysmal parenting uh, yeah. for David. Yeah, I I happened to just finish teaching David in a class uh, at Luther Seminary, and he yeah he's um, he's not the Sunday school David, uh, right? Of David and Goliath. There's some there's some uh, abuse of power and, as you say, abysmal parenting uh, for David. But the, these epochs that you talk about are really important. I, I'm looking at the very last verse uh, assigned for today. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the Messiah, 14 generations. So you move in this genealogy from the covenant with Abraham, which we've talked about earlier this year uh, in the narrative lectionary, to the covenant with David, which uh, we didn't explicitly talk about in the assigned text, but we did have a story uh, about David. And then uh, to the Babylonian exile, which is when the people uh, do not keep the covenant of Sinai, uh, they the part of the or their, their punishment is that they no longer possess the land uh, promised to them, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the Babylonian exile, uh, at least according to the Deuter Deuter Deuteronomy and the 
uh, writers of uh, First and Second Samuel and First and Second Kings, the Babylonian exile is a direct result of the people not keeping the covenant made with them at Sinai. And yet, uh, uh, even in exile, that that covenant with David is still uh, valid. Is still uh, is still in force, as is the covenant at Sinai as well, and the obligation to to follow the uh, the laws of Sinai. Uh, but that that covenant with David is that kind of uh, unconditional covenant. Even if uh, he sins against me, even if his descendants sin against me, God says, "I will not." forsake uh, my covenant with David. And so that's when in those 14 uh, generations from the Babylonian exile to the birth of Jesus in those generations is when this idea of the Messiah uh, uh, comes up, right? This idea that even if there is not a current king, earthly king on the throne of David, uh, there will be one, uh, uh, an anointed one, a son of David who will come uh, and, and, God's promise to David will be fulfilled in that one. Mm -hmm. And so this is, uh, uh, you know, even though it strikes us, as you said, uh, Joy, as maybe a little boring, you know, a whole list of names, um, there is some uh, uh, some strong theological claims uh, being made here that uh, it's in the birth of Jesus, which will be talked about uh, in uh, just in the, the following verses, uh, it's in that birth uh, of Jesus that this promise of the Messiah will be fulfilled. We see that, I'll just point at one other point, the very beginning of the uh, genealogy, the very beginning of Matthew, an account of the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So you have the, the Abraham covenant, the Sinai covenant, uh, and the Davidic covenant all kind of being fulfilled in this particular son of David, this particular son of Abraham, Jesus, the the, the Messiah. I would um, echo all of that. And I, I think it's especially worth pointing out that when Jerusalem fell and the Babylon in exile began in earnest, um, it would have felt like all of the covenants were gone. The, the Abrahamic covenant, the, the Mosaic covenant, the Davidic covenant, and uh God's fidelity to God's promises is just a really important theme that God finds ways to keep God's promises, no matter how much humans put those promises at risk. Um, and I especially love the genealogy uh, of, um, I love the genealogy because of the five women uh, mentioned in it. Now you've mentioned uh, explicitly Tamar, right? Did you mention the other four women? I in did the not. Joy? So, yeah, so. so, I mean, if you go on, it, it then includes Rahab and it includes Ruth and it includes the wife of Uriah. Um, and so all of them have um, interesting sexual uh, elements of their story. So clearly the author is in some way, the author of Matthew by explicitly mentioning these people is in some ways undermining our prudish Victorian sexual ethics. Um, and then the last one, of course, is Mary. So again, and, and the first four, three of them are explicitly Gentiles. Rahab is Canaanite. Ruth is Moabite. Uh, Tamar is Canaanite. And maybe Bathsheba, because she's married to Uriah the Hittite, uh, even though it doesn't mention Hittite here. I mean, so you've got also undermining the this um, genetically pure stream that, um, well, lots of people have had this problem of uh, thinking that genetic purity is important. Uh, so it's clearly undermining that also, pointing out that God's salvation in Jesus is for the entire world. Last little point, that's those are the, the, the big points, is that in Greek, uh, it begins, the uh, the English is an account of the genealogy of Jesus, but in Greek, it's Biblos Genesius. And so the book of Genesis, Genesius, so a clear, you know, a clear uh, allusion to Genesis 1. Absolutely. So cl clarify that for me, Ralph, in the Greek, it Sorry, so what does it say? The Greek is Biblos 
Genesius, right? The book uh, of Genesis. Uh, so you hear the yeah, book of Genesis I see, I see. there. Right, right. The Genesis of Jesus. Yeah. I right. see, I the see. genealogy. Um, I, I, I appreciate uh, your comment about the women. And uh, two things I'd, I'd like to add on that, because um, we tend still in our society to recognize um, women in, in their sexual identity. And um, I like the way you ended that, where we pay attention to their heritage. God from the beginning has had the world in mind. The promise to Abraham was that your seed would be a blessing to all the nations scattered in Genesis 11. And so by um, leaning into those uh, identities, uh, cultural and ethnic identity markers that would make them possibly, or some definitely not Jewish, God is fulfilling God's promise. And I, I would like to, to lift up kind of that motherhood rather than the sexuality and the sexual identity that uh, we're so used to doing. But if you're going to do that, which we're comfortable doing, it seems right that David, um, this great king, is called out because of his sexual immorality. Just saying, right? <laughs> Yeah, he's he's uh, the father of Solomon by not his wife, but the wife of Uriah. Oh my god! Is goodness. that what? It, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. That's yeah. that's pretty. And and I, here's a fun, another fun piece. Um, um, Rahab is referred to as Rahab the prostitute. The is not her middle name. Um, the is not a middle name in the first century. So Jesus' middle name is not Christ, and John's middle name is not the. <laughs> John the baptizer. So. Yeah, the, it, it, it doesn't say Rahab, the Rahab. prostitute here, just Rahab. Yeah. But yeah, uh, uh, she's, um, she's just Rahab who, as we recall, uh, even though she is a prostitute in the opening uh, uh, chapters of Joshua is more faithful uh, right. and more open to God's, uh, guidance than uh, and acknowledges God more than the spies who come to uh, to her house. Uh, Tamar too uh, important to note, right? Tamar, the daughter-in-law of Judah, who uh, after um, after the whole story, uh, Judah says she is more righteous than I am. Right? She has acted more righteously than I have. So these uh, these women. Uh, all, uh, yes, uh, most of them foreigners, all involved in some uh, sexual politics uh, to some extent because of the uh, circumstances in which they live. Uh, also all righteous women uh, and, and designated as such uh, by the biblical text, by the stories uh, that, that we know of them. So uh, this genealogy, uh, hopefully this conversation has uh, has encouraged you or helped you to see that there's perhaps more here than first meets the eye. Um, you are obviously uh, welcome and maybe even encouraged as you talk about this genealogy. Uh, please do recall some of those stories uh, that are linked to, to uh, you know, the, the names listed here uh, so that your people can also see the, uh, the riches, the theological claims that are made here about God's faithfulness. Uh, and uh, also referring back to those stories that we've heard earlier in this narrative lectionary year. Uh, so happy new year and uh, blessings on your preaching. Uh, and we will continue into the book of Matthew in the coming weeks. <laughs>